he has a net worth of 980 million dollars. He's an African and Nigerian. But reading his book, Africa Rise and Shine, I discovered a human behind the founder of the bank Zenith. What arouses respect in me when I think of Jim Odia, because that's his name, is not the money he earned or the empire he built. Many other wealthy people in Africa and the world do not inspire me the respect I do have for Jim. Indeed, the book took me through the struggles of an educated man, a born delayer, a hard worker, a father and a husband, a visionary, a lover of Africa, of Nigeria, a paragon of Brit. And that's what I intend to discuss in this book review. Born in 1951 in Agbor, in Delta State in Nigeria, Jim lost his father who had a heart attack as he was four. He is therefore raised by his mother, supported by his elder brother, aged 20 at the time, who was working in the town to fund his studies. In 1974, he is 23 years old. He flew then to the United States to pursue a bachelor's degree in business administration at the University of Monroe in Louisiana. Two years after completing his studies in 1977, he obtained a master in business administration, after which he returned to Nigeria. Soon after being back, he enrolled in National Youth Service Corps, a civic service and coupled this occupation with another job requiring the skills he had acquired while studying abroad. Near the end of his civic service, in 1979, Jim tried a selling occasion cars business. Here is how it happened. He got the idea thanks to the good repair skills of a mechanic of his old car his uncle had given him. His mechanic possessed, as himself says in the book, a kind of magic that allowed him to resurrect any car, whatever its initial state. So he agreed with him to bring him cheap cars he would repair and paint to make them attractive. This business, Jim Wright, not only helped me make a decent living, but also fostered in me a sense of negotiation which, when successful, makes both parties happy. The year after, in 1980, Jim Ovia got a job in the Merchant Bank of Africa and worked there for the following 10 years. His collaborations with the top and most brilliant bankers made him master in the finance world. His sharpened instinct killed him to see in the oil crisis of the beginning of the 1980s an opportunity to launch his bank. Indeed, the government, in its decision to liberalize the economy, had decided to privatize the financial sector. Therefore, the Minister of Finance had entrusted the CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, to grant authorization to individuals to run banking businesses. But one of the requirements was 20 years of experience in banking, and Jim had only 10. With confidence, though, Jim faced the jury and pledged his sake for hours until the jury's members started smiling. They were convinced. April 1990, he finally deposited the 20 million nairas of reserves on the account to be able to start his bank. The same day, though, the country underwent a putsch and some mercenaries took control of the government. Everything seemed lost. But fortunately, the militaries took back the central power a few months later. For Jim, the real lessons from him starting his business are, first, it is crucial to learn to trust one's instinct and have the good timing to take action. Jim had the chance to start a bank of offers that requires only 6 million reserves, what many of his friends chose. But he trusted his instinct and chose what required the sacrifice in short term. Here are his own words. Most of my fellows chose to try the merchant bank, but my instinct led me to the most profitable, the most complicated 
and the last taken path, the commercial bank. Let's talk now about the first days of the Zenith Bank. In the beginnings of the Zenith Bank, Jimmy employed five experienced managers for only one client. The days at Zenith Bank started at 7 o'clock and Jim required his employees to come before to have a quick meeting. The doors of the bank were already closed at 7 a.m. Jim applied the same discipline to himself and that therefore made everyone avoid lateness during the first five years of Zenith. Jim and his managers were also rigorous with the treatment employees reserved to clients and did not hesitate to apply sanctions. Meanwhile, rewards were also given to efficient employees to encourage them to do more. For as another maxim of Jim goes, surely people work for money, but they surpass themselves for recognition. During his stay in the US in the 1970s, Jim Ovia was fascinated by computers, even if they were still very big at the time. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were at the beginning of their work to make personal computers, but of course, these names were nothing at the time. Jim Ovia was so fascinated by these machines that he even decided to major in informatics, but his faculty advisor counseled him to major instead in business administration. This fascination for the machines, as he said himself, came from the feeling that these computers would be involved in everything in the future. And now in Nigeria, when no one talks about the internet, he knew that computerizing Zenith Bank would be a crucial advantage over his competitors. Therefore, Jim started looking for a system that could use a satellite to reach more people and be faster. He found after months of research a device designed with a parabola to connect with a satellite and bought it. But the Minister of Communication disapproved for the reason that it was a spying system. A detachment of military was then sent to pull down the whole structure. The investment of time and energy and money vanished on just one day. But years later, when the Ministry of Communications was dismissed, the new one seemed more open to Jim's idea and later on, he founded Cyberspace, one of the first providers of the internet in Nigeria. Some key lessons. First, good relationships are valuable than money. The first client of Jim was not an unknown person. He was an old friend he kept good relationships with. This is why he quotes this fact of Siumil Mittal, the Indian billionaire. There is nothing more precious than human relationships and I'd rather lose money than good contact. To keep it after a conversation, as after a negotiation, both parties must leave smiling. Next, create a culture of discipline, industriousness, and a good reward system. Whether it is when launching a business or learning a new skill, or even during studies, Jim's success story teaches me to adopt a culture of discipline, giving nothing less than everything in my guts. In the same way, rewarding people as well as oneself sustains motivation and is a cue to try harder and surpass expectations. Jim sums all this in this amazing quote. The long and difficult road to success requires a lot of effort and just as much ethics. To take it, one must know how to maintain good relationships with colleagues and clients, cultivate a desire to learn, be professional, flexible in fact, and determined in action. The next piece of advice, work with very good people at the beginning. Start with the right people, set the rules, communicate with your employees, motivate them, reward them. For Jim, if you do all this, you won't be able to fail. Next, never stop learning. Apart from Zenith Bank, Jim Ovia founded many other companies. He gives the secret of this by quoting Jeremy Johnson. If you do not keep on learning something, you will lose everything. 
Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, puts it this way. If you do not learn every day, you are doomed to do nothing useful or great. I came across the book of Jim Ovia in a library and ended the reading in about three hours. It was so captivating. I would recommend it to anyone looking for inspiration or looking for being part of Africa being great. For us, the last sentence of the book says, Africa is a land of possibilities, rich in countless opportunities. The best is coming, says it.